All right. We are doing another 30 minute walk today. Welcome to fall walk number three. Three is a charm. We're gonna have a good walk today because the weather is beautiful. There aren't many days that are like this. So when these days come around, I gotta make sure that I really, really capitalize on these days. I'm happy that I was able to get out of the gym at a good time. I was actually scared that it was gonna be nightfall before I made it out. Let me put my timer on before I start walking and not even recording. So we're gonna do 30 minutos, 30 minutes on the clock, and we're gonna start going for it. So yeah, like I was saying, I got to the gym today around, let me see, I had a meeting at work that went from like three o'clock to 3.50, and then I sort of just rushed to the gym after that. And I really, really focused when I got there because you know, you don't really have to spend that long in the gym to have like a pretty good workout, but oftentimes, you know, you can get caught up in the, you know, the weeds of the gym. You might get sidetracked by some friends or your phone. But I'm, you know, I was thinking, you know what, let me, let me make this quick because I need, to, I need to work out and I need to get home so I can do my walk. Not only for, you know, the YouTube and for anyone else that's watching, but just for my own good, right? I want to be able to satisfy my own goals and this is one of those goals. Got to make sure I do my walk. So... Like I said, third fall walk, 30 minutes on deck. If you're joining for the first time, use these videos as a template for your own cardio health. If you're looking for you know, a video that you can watch, think of this like a little bit of, of a podcast. If you're asking yourself, hey, you know, I wish there was something I can listen to for half an hour that I can just tune out and just walk and not have to worry about checking the clock, well, let this video be that for you. Whether you do shorter or longer, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent and you showed up. Oh, wow. This person did a very good job with their house. It's kind of nice when you see people remodeling their homes. A lot of that going on, especially now in this holiday season. But yeah, 30 minutes on the clock. It's going to be a good walk. I'm going to try to keep the intensity up. I'm going to try and keep the speed up. Because you also don't want to, well, I suppose if it's your first time walking, you know, if you're just getting into a cardio routine, then you might be walking at a normal pace. But if you're used to it, then you probably want to be walking a little more intensely. Funny enough, that's only something I started doing recently, walking more intensely. But you can really feel and see the difference when you do it. I took down some notes of some stuff I want to talk about today. One of the things I want to talk about today is a little bit more about me and who I am. I think a couple of you may already have listened to the other videos and you might have a somewhat high level idea of what it is I do or who I am. But obviously as the channel name is called, my name is Raphael and I'm a software engineer. And I have been a software engineer for the last six years. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how I got into it how my journey and life got me to where I am today. So I have an uncle, not really my uncle, but it's just a Hispanic thing to call people that you grew up with your uncle. <laughs> and he is a civil engineer. Well, he was a civil engineer. He is, he's a retired civil engineer. So when I was growing up, I spent a lot of time at his house and he told me a lot about his, his work. And I had a lot of fun hanging out with him but it made me want to pursue engineering. So from a pretty young age, I think my mom told me a story about how when I was like five years old, I told her, yeah, I wanna be an engineer. I knew from a very young age, that's what I wanted to do. It just seemed like the right thing to do. It seemed fun, it seemed interesting. And so I pursued that. I thought about civil engineering for a long time and then sometime around probably eighth grade, you know, or early high school, ninth grade, I remember getting these pamphlets in the mail from a local university and in that pamphlet there was a section about engineering and I remember next to one of the the disciplines of engineering specifically mechanical engineering there was a picture of a roller coaster and I thought man that's cool that's what I want to do I want to design roller coasters and so at that moment I had decided that okay I'm gonna I'm gonna pursue mechanical engineering at least that's what I thought up until I actually got to university 
and I did a year of mechanical engineering. My declared major was mechanical engineering. And I remember when I started, they had all the engineers take at least one class of programming. So you had to take an introductory programming class. Just had to look back for a second to reorient myself here. You had to take a programming introduction class. And that's when I fell in love. Programming just spoke to me. It just felt, it felt more natural than anything else. And it felt a lot more interesting. It, it was a lot more interesting to me, programming. The first class I took was, like I said, introduction to programming. And it was in a language called C++, which is common in a lot of universities to teach C++, or sometimes you'll learn Java, at least during that time. I'm not really sure what you know, schools are teaching today. Let me just click, I'm gonna click my camera real quick just to make sure. Yeah, sorry if the, the angle was a little bit bad here, but, and I hope it's not too windy. Let's see how good these wind muffs work on these mics, but like I was saying, I took that introduction to programming class, I fell in love, and that's when I decided, yeah, I'm gonna pursue this full time. Now, during my first year of university, I remember it was the first time that I wasn't involved with music, and you might be wondering, okay, how do, how do these things have anything to do with each other? Well, before that, ever since second grade, I was always involved in choir, believe it or not. <laughs> and I had been in choir all throughout elementary school, and all throughout middle school, and all throughout high school. And when I got to my first year of university, it was the first time that I was not involved in choir. And instead of joining you know, the choir at my university, I instead wanted to take it a little bit further and go to a music school. But I still wanted to also do engineering, so I thought to myself, well, there's, there's got to be something that combines both. And luckily, I did find a university in my hometown that offered a program called Music Engineering. And I, and I know I spoke briefly about this in a previous video, I believe, maybe not. Maybe it was one of, one of those videos that I did early on that didn't end up making it on the YouTube channel. But this program, music engineering, really was, you know, part-time music student, part-time engineering student. So I, I would go, like, later on in my years, I would go from, you know, an operating systems class to, like, chorus. And then after chorus, I'd go to a systems programming class. And then after systems programming, I would go to music theory, you know, so on and so forth. So I really was, truthfully, a full-time music student taking voice lessons, piano classes, music theory, music history, but also taking engineering courses at the same time. Now, there, were, there was a subset of students that were really, really involved with music production, and I guess the other discipline would be sort of plug-in design. If there are any instrumentalists listening to this, you know that, for example, as a guitar player, you can buy physical plugins, not plugins, but I guess pedals, or if you're doing everything through, you know, if you're doing everything digitally, you can buy some plugins that you can use for your music. So a lot of students either worked at companies that would create these physical plugins or the digital ones. It's something that they really enjoyed. There was a lot of other students that did the music production. You know, they wanted to be producers and mixing engineers. They got really involved into that. And some other students got even deeper with something called DSP or digital signal processing. And they end up working in companies like Bose and Sonos. And then of course there was a subset of students that they would be in the music school, but they would opt out of the music engineering classes in favor of more classic computer engineering classes. And that's what I ended up doing. So, you know, I would be able to go up to my advisor and say, hey, I'm really interested in operating systems. You know, I know it doesn't fall within the curriculum for music engineering, but can I swap out a music engineering class for this operating systems class? And because they were equivalent levels, and when I mean my levels, I'm talking about like the, you know, the 100, 200, 300 class, they would let me substitute it. So I didn't graduate with a major in computer engineering, but I got my bachelor's of science in music engineering, and I ended up just taking a lot of classes in computer engineering, like intro to programming, data structures, algorithms class, operating systems, systems programming, so on and so forth. All these classes that eventually led to six weeks after graduation calling the, you know, my, my first manager at the company I currently work at and finally getting a job. So that's how I sort of landed where I am today. That's my story of me and how I became a software engineer. 
And if, you know, if anyone's interested in learning more about that, I'd be more than happy to talk about it. I can go more in depth with software engineering, but I also realize that maybe a lot of you listening don't even know, you know, maybe you don't even care about it, right? So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a high level. That way you can get to know me a little bit more, know what I'm all about. And yeah, like I said, I've been doing it for six years. I, frankly, I, I really enjoy what I do. I really, really enjoy what I do. I realize I'm one of the fortunate few to feel that way. So I feel blessed to be in a position where I can actually wake up on a Monday morning and be excited to go to work. So, like I said, if anyone wants to know more, I'll be, you know, for any of the, the techies out there listening. Hey, how you doing? For any of the techies out there listening, I currently do full stack engineering, probably doing more focus on the front end. So if anyone wants to know more about that, just let me know in the comments and we'll chat. And then let's see what the next thing is because I also had another thing I wanted to discuss. It's good, I like planning these things ahead of time sometimes. Yeah, let's talk about the workout that I did today. So I did arms today. In the gym, I did biceps and triceps. I'm probably gonna do forearms later tonight when I get home. I actually recently bought myself a 15 pound dumbbell set because I only had from 10 and then to 20. And I feel like I needed that intermediary, you know, 15 to be able to progress but not go too heavy and then just unmotivate myself or discourage myself from, you know, progressively overloading. So I did biceps and triceps. Like I said earlier, I went pretty quick. I got into the gym and I started off with dumbbell curls. Typically, right now, my goal is like if I can do if I can do like a couple of different working sets with 30 pound dumbbells, just classic dumbbell curls, I'd be very happy about that. Because I know, like you know when you're getting stronger, and I've been in this position before where you know, I'm starting to get stronger and stronger and then something happens and all of a sudden I lose the consistency and it's terrible. That's why it's one of the hardest things in the gym is not even the workout itself. It's just being able to go every single day. Because at the end of the day, that's really what's gonna get you the the gains that you're looking for. (laughs) So I went to the gym, I did dumbbell curls. I believe I did maybe five working sets. Try to do at least five reps a set. I did a warm up. I did like two warm up sets with the 20s. Felt really good. And then I jumped directly into a heavier set with the 30s. I did a set of 10 reps, which I'm very happy about. And then finally, I wanted to push myself a little bit more and do a set with 35 pounds. So I think the first set I did, man, I think I did five reps. Like I think I did five, but honestly, more realistically, I probably did three but that for me is phenomenal. So what I I do like, you know, three reps of 35 and then immediately do a drop set. I'll do like two more reps with 30 pounds and then I'll do probably, oh, someone's calling me. Okay, that was weird. That was like a scam call. I'll do about, you know, two more reps with 30s and then I'll probably go down to 20s and keep going. So for me, it was a great workout and that, I mean, it was a great set because I know 35 for me is, you know, my, my maximum right now. So the fact that I was able to bust out a couple of reps at the 35 made me really happy. From there, I moved on to the rope, the triceps rope pushdowns or pull downs. I forget what it was called exactly. And with that, I forget the exact weight that I had on the stack, but I know it was more than last week. Again, have to make sure you're always progressively overloading. So I was able to do that and I followed a similar path. I did about four to five working sets, probably at least five reps each, pushed myself until I couldn't anymore. And like my whole thing is if I feel comfortable with a movement, if it's a movement that I know I'm gonna get a good squeeze, it's a movement that I'm good at. Like if I feel good, I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm not, I'm not looking to like maximize my variety. I I know that, you know, you shock the muscle with variety, but I also know that consistency is key. And if I feel good doing a movement, as long as I'm progressively overloading and pushing myself with a high enough, you know, intensity, then I know it's gonna be good for me. It's really that simple. Like don't get so, try not to be so focused on the variety. Just, Just get in the gym and lift some stuff, you know? So I did that. Then I went to a preacher curl, 
did a couple sets on the Preacher Curl machine. I love the Preacher Curl machine. I mean, out of all, all the exercises, that, that, I think that's one of my favorite ones because you, you just get such a great squeeze on your bicep. And it's really fun to progressively overload on that one and just get a very nice pump. So I think I ended up on that one on 100 pounds on the stack, which I'm, I'm curious, like, probably different gyms have different, you know, how do I say it? Like, does 100 pounds feel the same in all gyms? I feel like I saw a short of that recently. Depending on how new your gym is, the weights might feel differently, you know, depending on how much the machines are getting banged up. Anyway, I did my, my set with 100 pounds. Felt, you know, amazing. Again, I know, like, man, when I started going to a gym this last time, and when I say this last time, how do I, how do I explain this? So, you know, there's periods of your life where you'll go to the gym for like two, three months, and then maybe you stop. Right now, I've been on a streak of going for a couple weeks. When I started this whole current journey of gym going, man, I started probably at like 40 or 50 pounds, and that was maybe, that was probably three or four weeks ago. So, in about a month, I've, I've been you know, able to almost double that weight. So realizing a lot of newbie-ish gains, I say newbie-ish because I'm not entirely new to the gym, but I'm still, like I've never gotten to that point in my life, you know, where I'm really, really making big changes and I hope that this, you know, now is the time for that. So after the Peacher Girl, I just went back to triceps. I did some more triceps pushdowns, tricep pushdowns with the cable, the rope, and then I ended it. And for me, that was a great workout. You know, I felt a great pump felt a really nice pump. I felt strong. And what I'll probably do now is when I get home, I'll probably just hit forearms because I'm, I'm never hitting forearms. I'm gonna stop right here for this guy. I'm never hitting forearms. Although I do have this little ball that I've heard is good for golfers. It's called a, a gyro ball or something. It's a little ball with a gyroscope inside of it and you just rotate it about your wrist. And the faster you rotate it, the more, you know, the more, how do I, how do I say it? What am I, what, what word am I looking for? The more of a contraction your forearm is going to feel and you're going to get. So it's very good for grip strength. I mean, to the point where I feel like you do that for one week and then give someone a good handshake and they'll notice the difference in your grip. So I, you know, I, I've done that. I think it's good for me, especially since I type a lot. It's probably good for carpal tunnel and just good like for finger strength. But I do want to get some direct forearm work with the dumbbells. So when I get home, I can do it with dumbbells. I do have an easy bar that I can use, which is pretty good. So we'll see. We'll mess with it. We'll have a good time. But direct forearm work is probably, probably the move because, I mean, I, I, I could also in, include other movements on arm day, like reverse, reverse curls or hammer curls. And that'll all be good for my forearms. Maybe I should, I probably should. Because then I'll at least be getting some more indirect forearm work. More so than I'm getting now. So I think I do need to include a little bit of that. So we'll see. So that's the workout I had today. And of course I'm wrapping it up with this walk. Tomorrow I'll do legs. Tomorrow's gonna be interesting because it's gonna be a quick day of work because we have several meetings. But one of those meetings is gonna last a little bit longer than I'd like for it to. So, I don't know, I might have to leave earlier so I can get my workout in and also get my walk in before it gets too dark. But I guess now it's not too bad. And what time is it right now? It's 5.50, so I guess as long as I'm walking around this time, it's probably okay. So we'll see what happens, I don't know. I'm, I just, all I know is I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna show up, and that's gonna be awesome. So, let's see. What else we got in here? Oh yeah, what am I gonna eat after this? So there is a recipe that I highly encourage everyone to look up. If no one has downloaded that Tasty app yet, which I mentioned, I think, in yesterday's walk or two days ago. Like I said, there's Tasty right here. There's a really good meal called Creamy Tuscan Chicken. So it's amazing. It's just like creamy chicken. I mean, it's literally in the title, right? So the reason I, I like this recipe, or how did I learn about this recipe? Well, in the place that I work, they actually had that meal for lunch. And, you know, 
after my first bite, I fell in love and I'm like, I need to make this. And fortunately, I found the recipe on Tasty and it's super simple. I mean, a lot, like I said, a lot of these recipes on Tasty, they're meant to be highly accessible and easy to make because you, know, you don't need to be a, a Michelin star chef to eat well and make nice meals, right? That, that's one thing I learned the more I kept visiting this app. Ooh, that dog's not happy. He's upset. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna make tonight. After this, I'll go grocery shopping. I'll get everything I need. And then I'll make some of that tasty, tasty chicken, which I can't wait for with some rice. And it's gonna be awesome, man. Because, yeah, I don't wanna say I've been eating like terrible or anything, but yesterday I had some classic bar food, some mozzarella sticks and nachos, which, man, I love that stuff. <laughs> And then, what did I have the day before that? I forgot what I had the day before that, but it was good. Maybe I had Chipotle or something. No, I had pizza. I had pizza, a really good pizza. It was like half Hawaiian and half this like, it's called the Maria pizza. I think it was like prosciutto and tomatoes and it was, it was awesome. But it was, it's one of these pizza places that's like local. So the pizza was, was just like very well made. It's thin. So you don't feel so bloated when you're done eating it, which is incredible, because sometimes you can have a couple slices of Domino's. You have like two, three slices of Domino's and you feel terrible. And then I ate, I ate an entire pie from this place and I felt like even leaner after eating it. So that's pretty cool. All right, enough yapping from me. Let's take a little bit of time to reflect like we always do. Let me reposition my camera, make sure everything's good here. We're going to take some time to reflect. We'll be uh, quiet for a little bit, and I'll see you guys in a minute or two, or maybe three. Ooh. Man. That was good. That was a good shot. Here you go, man. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. I'm just trying to do, like, a vlog. Oh, you got a denim? Huh? Yeah, I literally just started it like two days ago. Uh, what is it? Oh, nice, man. It's just my name, like Rafael Negron. I can type it for you if you'd like. Nice, man. What's your name? Uh, Jutsen. Jutsen? Yeah. Oh, sweet, man. Did, hey, when you made that, did it go in? Nah. It, nah, it went out. It was close. I thought I made it. Nice, man. You okay with being in the video? Yeah, sure, sure. Cool, man. Nice. That's me right here. I just walk and talk. All right. Cool, man. Nice, man. Thank you so much, bro. Right, Take I'll it easy. Yeah, <laughs> nice, look at that. What a, what a great moment to get on camera. Man, that's awesome. We're out here making cool things happen. See, that's, that's one of the, what's up man, how you doing? It's one of the great things about being out here in the neighborhood. I know I, I said we'd take a little bit of time to talk, but that was such a genuine moment. That's awesome. All right, so back to the regularly scheduled programming here. We'll, we'll still take some time to meditate and do a little bit. See you guys in a bit.
was a nice little break. I want to talk about that little interaction we just had. So if you think about it, a little bit of history about how this all came about, my whole channel and me walking. So this is not the first time I've tried to do this. I mean, literally in the past three years, I've made this channel two other times. But I, I truly believe that third time's a charm because this is my third time. And without a doubt, I'm having not only the most fun doing it, but I feel like I've, I, I think I've sort of dialed it in. I'm, I don't know, maybe because I'm older now, I'm just a little more comfortable with everything and I just have a lot more fun doing these things. But man, that was so cool. And I think that's, if anything, that's actually the point of these vlogs, right? Because you all get to see a little bit of just a normal day in the life. So, what a genuine interaction. That's, that's, gonna, that's gonna push me to keep doing this more and more. So I think, I think his name was, was Jutsen, so sorry, I'm really sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but if you're watching this video, thanks a lot, man. And Keep, keep it up with your basketball, man. It's awesome. That's the thing, right? It's all about a community. It's all about who you meet along the way. And that's what makes it fun. You see, if I, if I didn't walk today, I wouldn't have had an interaction like that. So we're gonna keep going here. We have about, let's see. This walk felt really fast today. We got already three minutes and 15 seconds going. So if you're watching this, and you've made it this far, congratulations. Let me know how you fared. One thing I wanted to do that I forgot to do was I wanted to, on the title of the video, just also add the amount of calories I've burned during this walk, but I don't think, I don't know, like how can I retroactively, I only have, you know, I can, I can probably guesstimate how many calories I've burned. It's telling me 157 right now, let me see. I won't even count the ones that I, you know, burned earlier just walking, but I did a 30 minute walk or so earlier today. Now I'm doing another 30 minute walk now. So let's imagine that this number divided by two is how many numbers, how many calories I burn in 30 minutes. So I'll round up to 160. So let's say it's about 80 calories. So the 160 mark is gonna be my 80 relatively. And then I'll just normalize it from there. So I'll, I'll see what I can add. But I do gotta get probably a better tracker. The phone's probably not that great. Like at least the Apple Watch would be better. Or like a Fitbit or something, I don't know. Or like a chest, a chest strap. But yeah. We're looking forward now to tomorrow. Maybe on, on a weekend, if I'm able to do this earlier, I can do an even longer walk, like an hour. And if I do an hour, I'll definitely have some like jogging moments in there. I still don't know how stable the video would be. I mean, I get a lot of stabilization from the, the mount and also the GoPro, but I'll do some testing, I'll see how it is. But I would like to include some jogging segments in there. And that'll be cool too, right? Cause some people, I think, you know, if you wanna get started with running, I think probably a good way is you, you know, you do a little bit of walking, then you do a little bit of jogging, go back to walking, do that cycle over and over. So, Maybe I can, you know, start jogging and have like a timer in the video or at least voice it. So if you're interested in doing the same thing, you know, you can listen to me and I'll say, okay, go. And we'll start jogging for, I don't know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, 60 seconds, whatever. And then when I'm done, I say, I'm done. So again, without even having to look at your phone, you can just listen to my vocal cues and get a good cardio session. in. so we'll see, I'll, I'll do some experimentation to see how it all works out. but. It seems like an exciting time. Now it's time to go eat, or at least to go get groceries and cook and then eat. So probably looking at another hour or so of preparation, but it's gonna be a great time. So like I always say, thank you all so much for joining. It is the third day of my fall walk, of our fall walk, so keep in touch. There will be a lot more to come. I mean, there's gonna be an infinite amount, right? If I ever take a day off, you know, in the future, in the, in the long, long future, I'll let you guys know, but let's assume I'm never going to take a day off because it's all about consistency. So, hope you all have a great rest of your Tuesday night or morning, wherever you're watching from. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all tomorrow for fall walk number four after a crazy leg workout for me. 
All right, take it easy. Later. All right, so this right here is my little, my little home gym. I got this whole power rack during the pandemic. It's been a pretty phenomenal gift. I have a little bit of a setup here. I have the power rack. I have this barbell that my, one of my good friends from work gave me. I have some resistance cables and some weights. I got a workout mat. I got some dumbbells, which are, are really good. Maybe I'll do some other videos with that. But I think in yesterday's video, I mentioned that I did shoulders. Maybe I did or that I wanted to and that I would do it in the home, but the, the night ended up panning out a little bit differently than I would have liked. So instead, I'm just gonna try and do a shoulder workout now. Since I already did arms earlier today, I don't know how necessarily hard I wanna go, so I think I'm just gonna do sets of the standing military barbell press. I don't, I don't even know if that's like the actual name or if it's just standing barbell press, but I'm just gonna see how many of these I can do. And we're just gonna go from there. So this is probably one of my favorite exercises to do. I feel like if I'm not really feeling like doing a, a full shoulder day, then just hitting this is, is pretty nice. You know, I typically like doing lateral raises, but the standing is really nice as well. So let me just make sure everything's sort of out of the way here and we'll start going. So let's see how many I can do. Again, everyone has like baseline strength. This for me is like pretty good. I'm gonna continue adding some weights, but I'm just happy to be able to, to be able to do this at home whenever I want. So let's go ahead and get started with a set of this. So we're gonna be lifting this up. I hope it's not too close to the mic, but uh, I guess let's just go for it. All right, here we go. First set and let's do it. Nice. That's feeling really good. I'll do at least, I don't know, maybe like 15 or something. Really tighten that core. Nice. Wow, that feels really nice. It's 10. Nice. All right, so I think that was probably, I think that was 15. I hope I didn't miscount, but that felt like 15 to me. Hopefully, like I said, it's not hitting the, you know, the, the wind muff too much, but that was a really nice set. Like I said, it's one of my favorite exercises. It's just, you know, when you're, when you're pressing and you come back down from that movement, I just feel, you know, you feel really strong, which is awesome. Like who doesn't want to feel strong? I feel like this is just an all around great strength exercise. Hopefully it translates to a lot of, you know, of other movements. So we're just going to keep hammering away and, and go for it. So I'm not really planning. This is like the first time, literally first time I've ever filmed myself working out. So I'm going to probably keep this segment short. Whew, I'm trying to catch my breath over here. I was pretty fast. 15. All right. So I think what I'll do, I can go for 10 or I can just, I think I should probably be smart. Let me be smart and add five. The thing is, let me show you guys a little bit what I'm working with here. So if we, let's just get this over here. So you can see, I got all these weights down there. I got some weights over there. So I'm just gonna get some fives and I got my clasps somewhere around here. Okay, I got them sitting down over there. So you can see here, I got all my dumbbells and my easy bar curl. So let me put this back down here. Make sure we got the right angle and everything's looking good. All right, so. One clasp here, and one clasp on this bench. Watch out here. Let me just get five pound weights. So this, okay, nice. Right. Hopefully that's not too loud. Got the five pound here. So yeah, I'll probably do four or five sets. If I can top off at, hmm, I don't know if I can top off at like 10 pounds, that'd be really good. Or maybe even 15 on each side, because 15 on each side would be 30 plus 45. So we're looking at what, 75? Okay, so probably from now on, I'd like to try and hit uh, 10 reps for each one of these different sets I'll be doing, no matter the weight. So let us go from here and see what we can do. 
You might hear a dog crying in the background. That's Benji the Dachshund. For anyone that has watched the earlier videos, you guys know what he looks like. So let us keep going from here. I got the door closed and he, he's, he misses me because he hears me talking, but he can't see me. So, all right, we're going to do 10 reps. Here we go. Let's go ahead and do 10. That felt good. Do I think, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get 10 again with the 10, uh, 10 reps with 10 pounds on each side. Of course, I'll, I'll try, I'll go for it. But, you know, depending on how I'm feeling, that was, I wouldn't say it's necessarily heavy, but getting to that 10 is a little bit tough. If I'm looking to really just maximize, you know, I guess the weight, I might lower that rep count by a little bit. Maybe on the 10, I'll try to go, mm, Oh, maybe we can do five reps, you know, that five by five program that a lot of beginners usually start off with just to maximize strength gains. Um, yeah, let's do something like that maybe. We'll see. Or, um, can, I, can I safely increase the weight by 10? I kind of want to, kind of want to try. If I'm going to do five reps, I might as well go heavier than just the standard plus five pounds. So let's see what we can do here. I think I'm going to go for that. And I'll, honestly, I'll probably just do two more sets of those. And that might be it. Again, this wasn't really intended to be a complete shoulder workout. As much as, you know, just getting something in. And also doing a test with the GoPro, like trying to figure out this angle, seeing if the microphone works, if it sounds good, if it looks good, if it's fun to do. I mean, that's like the main thing. Is it, is it actually fun to do, right? So let's get the weights here. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, you can invest, you can invest in a power rack. You know, I got this bench from Amazon. I think I got it on sale for like 50 bucks. And then I, I got lucky with the barbell and the plates because I, like I was mentioning earlier on, my buddy of mine moved to California and he needed to get rid of all the stuff. So he honestly, he just gave it to me for free. But Look on, you know, places like Craigslist or OfferUp. Don't try to optimize early on. There's no reason in investing hundreds of dollars into a barbell if you're just getting started because what if you don't even remain consistent, right? So you wanna, you wanna like start, start low, get into the habit first and then optimize later because, you know, you get too excited, you buy all the, all the gear and now, now you're, you know, $500,000 deep and you don't even work out, so. Got to make sure that you can, you can do a lot with the basics. You can, you get yourself one barbell, forget the rack, forget the bench. You get yourself just a barbell. You can do a lot with that. Just the barbell itself. So I remember this uh, very popular YouTuber. I think his name is Juji Mufu. Like, I think that's how he started. He said like, I just had a barbell and that's all I did. And I got pretty strong with that. You can do a lot with a barbell. So don't think that, you know, going back to basics is, it's a great idea. Don't worry about all the, the complexities of working out. So if it's getting too complex, you're probably doing something wrong. All right, so we got 15 on each side. We're at 75 pounds. The max I've ever done is 25 on each side. And I was just like, I think I was just doing a lot of shoulder pressing at the time. That's, my, that's like my PR. If I ever get to like 25 and a five or 25 and 2.5, which I do have, that would be my record. That's like what I'm aiming for. So we'll see. How far we get? So let's see. Enough talking. Let's get into it. Oh. 
wow. Ooh. Okay, that felt phenomenal. I mean, you may have seen a little bit of shaking there, but you know, I again tried to tighten my core and really try to remain stabilized. But that felt really good. I, I definitely feel strong. I don't feel any weird, you know, joint pain or achiness, so that's all good. I think the test was successful. So I'm probably gonna leave it there for now. Again, this is not what you'd normally expect in a shoulder workout. It was mostly just for me to get in front of the camera and talk and have a good time. Show you guys a little bit of my little home gym here. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's really it. So I probably will be doing some more stuff around when I get a chance to do it. You know, you can expect walking videos every day, but working out videos, that's, that's a little bit different because well, sometimes after walking, you're just tired, right? Usually you do the workout first, then you walk. To go back to doing strength training, sometimes a little bit tough. So depending on how I feel, you might see these videos. So anyway, thank you everyone for watching. It's been a lot of fun doing this and I'll probably do more of it. So I'll see you all next time. Yeah, have a great rest of your Tuesday.